Hello everyone, Iris Franz here. Today we're going to talk about the aggregate expenditure model. We're going to start with the background. The background of the aggregate expenditure model started from the Great Depression. If you study the history, you know that there was a big stock market crash in 1929. And at that time, a lot of people had their savings in the stock market. So because of the stock market crashed, people's savings were wiped out. And as a result, consumers will have to cut their spending. Now, as a result of that spending cut, now firms will have to uh, reduce their production because they were not able to sell their goods and services. Now the firms were reducing their production. That means they had to lay off their workers. Now these workers were also consumers. These consumers now have to further cut their consumption. So you can see our economy is in a spiral downturn. And the classical economists, they suggest, well, in the long run, the economy will adjust itself. So the classical economists were not able to offer any solution. So you can see where we stop. And that's the background of the development of the aggregate expenditure model. So the aggregate expenditure model was originated by John Keynes, a British economist. And here is his major argument. So the argument is this, labor and production is determined by how much people spend. And the size of the economy depends on the total amount of expenditures. How so? Well, if we don't spend, if we don't consume, then firms are not going to produce. If the firms don't produce, they will not hire workers. Likewise, if the government does not spend, if the government doesn't purchase goods and services, then firms are not going to produce. If firms don't produce, then firms are not going to hire laborers they are not going to increase production. And therefore, the size of the economy depends on the total amount of expenditures. So here's the bottom line, the solution for the Great Depression in the 1930s, as well as the Great Recession in 2008, and our COVID recession in 2020, was to increase expenditures. If expenditures rise, that means firms and factories, they will have to produce more goods and services. And in order to produce more goods and services, they will hire more workers. And when they hire more workers, that's going to increase their paycheck. That means these workers who are also consumers with a larger paycheck will now go out and consume. So when they consume more, they are buying more goods and services that's going to cause other firms to produce even more. So our economy is going up. But if expenditures fall, that means factories and firms will idle and they will accumulate too many goods and services they are not able to sell. As a result, they are going to lay off their workers because they don't need to produce so much goods and services people are not buying. So this laborers got laid off, that means they got a smaller paycheck, they will have to cut their consumption. So when they cut their consumption, that means they're not buying goods and services which will cause other firms and other factories to lay off their workers because people weren't buying their goods and services. And as a result, if we have a falling expenditure, that's going to cause the economy to go into a spiral downturn. So here is our aggregate expenditure model. Aggregate expenditure, AE, is equal to consumption plus investment plus government spending plus net exports. If any of those four items is increasing, that means our aggregate expenditure will go up. And when our aggregate expenditure goes up, that means firms will have to produce more to satisfy our aggregate expenditure demand. And when the firm is producing more, that means they're going to hire more workers. That is going to lower our unemployment rate. And therefore, if there is an increase in aggregate expenditure, that is going to increase our real GDP.